Hello guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Hope you're doing well and keeping safe on this Thursday. Had a good week so far. We've got the Champions League draw for the group stage later. Today it is believed at least one Chelsea player will be winning UEFA Player of the Year. Um, it's likely to be Jorginho, but N'Golo Kante could win it as well. So it'd be lovely to see either of those players pick up that trophy before the draw takes place. And I'm going to be giving you my reaction later today to that draw to see who Chelsea get. Because, you know, it could be a very, very difficult draw this year for Chelsea, despite being European champion. So excited to see that. Always a good time of the year to see who we get in the Champions League uh, group stage. But today's video is going to be all about uh, transfers. Uh, Jules Kunde, Kurt Zuma, and Saunagez. They're kind of the three, I think, most realistic and biggest transfer stories surrounding Chelsea at the moment. And as we get closer to deadline day, um, it feels like all three of these moves might be completed. Um, I'm quite confident. I think that at least in the incomings, I think that especially Jules Kunde, I can see that move happening. And as well with Salman Aguez in terms of a central midfielder, which is what we need, there kind of is a belief that he's the only option at the moment, even though I personally have said all summer that someone like Aurelien Chumeni or, of course, Declan Rice, I think would be a better option. But Salman Aguez, we'll get into that, give you my thoughts on, on these deals. Um, I think the best place to start is Jules Kunde because that's the biggest news, I think, in terms of Chelsea really going into an area and spending a lot on a player. And as well, the reported fee by Marina is quite ridiculous, actually, if it is the, the event fee that Chelsea pay for Jules Koundé if they get this deal over the line. Fabrizio Romano tweeting last night, uh, Chelsea have their final bid ready to be submitted for Jules Koundé, still waiting for green light on Zuma to complete Koundé. Deal work in progress on both Sal and Koundé, but not done signing stages yet. Um, we have heard you know, recently that Koundé has agreed personal terms. I think that was probably a few weeks back when I think Fabrizio Romano originally tweeted about Jules Koundé to Chelsea. So it appears on that end, there's going to be no issue in terms of the personal terms. You saw about Chelsea agreeing a fee and it's kind of obviously tied into Kurt Zuma leaving because I think if Kurt Zuma doesn't leave I think it's unlikely that Kunde deal happens because I think they want to get a centre-back out the door because there's so many centre-backs we have at the club so it just makes a lot of sense and uh, Di Marzio last night Gianluca Di Marzio uh, Kunde to Chelsea for 50 million euros uh, a deal almost done quite ridiculous that that works out around 42 43 million pounds for a player as good as Jules Kunde, despite my reservations, not reservations over the player, reservations over whether he is an essential signing. But I mean, it would be kind of a ridiculously low fee for a player who, looking at his release clause upwards of, I believe, around 85 million euros, when the reports earlier in the window that Chelsea could be paying 50 to 60 million for Jules Kunde. That's an incredible piece of business, it really is. And I know a lot of people who are more experts of Jules Kunde than, than myself believe this is an incredible deal for Chelsea, it really is, if they get it over the line. Obviously, this is tied up in Kurt Zuma going to West Ham. And last night, it was kind of chaos on uh, Twitter because... Jason Burt from The Telegraph, and this came from originally from France, and then Jason Burt from The Telegraph uh, reporting uh, that talks uh, between West Ham and, and Kurt Zuma's agent are proving very difficult uh, move from Chelsea now in danger of collapsing. And everyone kind of felt, well, what's going to happen here? Because is, is there going to be a knock-on effect to Jules Kunde? Is Kurt Zuma going to stay? Is this move completely uh, collapsed very quickly? Then he clarified, should have waited before tweeting. Just as I sent Nat, was told Dill could be back on after all. Stand down. Today, it kind of feels more in the direction that Kurt Zuma to West Ham will be happening, or at least it's more likely to happen. It's not finalised yet, but it kind of has always felt like Zuma leaves, Kunde comes in, and then, as we'll get to with Sound Aguez, I think that kind of, it all kind of works together in terms of the logic behind this deal. So, Jules Kunde, we've spoken a lot about him. Uh, my original reaction to it was... Logically, let's go to the positives. I think he is one of the, the brightest young centre-backs in uh, European football. You know, I think that the, the numbers point that out absolutely. People who watch him on a regular basis uh, speak to how good he is. And Chelsea, in terms of their centre-back situation, despite, for me, like at the current moment compared, if you compare it instantly to midfield, may not seem like the most pressing issue. We have brought up this issue before of the centre-back situation in terms of a year's time. You know, we've let Mark Gurhi and Fakari Tomori leave this summer. Uh, the contract situations of Andreas Christensen and, and Antonio Rudiger. Christensen, from the likes of Matt Law this week, sounds a little bit more positive, but Rudiger still not sure on that. The age of Thiago Silva likely to only be here for one more season. And of course, Cesar Azpilicueta, you, you expect 
prospect at this age kind of decides his future at Chelsea given he is a legend at the club uh, but you never know and, and in terms of his age he is getting on even though he continues to be an incredible player for us so they're, fi- they're kind of it seems like there needs to be a refresh in that area at least next summer but Chelsea are kind of acting swiftly here and kind of solving an issue that they may have to solve next summer which I think is a good thing and I've looked at Kunde before. I wrote a massive article for uh, Football London about him and kind of this whole situation weeks back where I looked at his game. And to be honest, it's no surprise why Thomas Tuchel would want Jules Kunde in terms of being that progressive passer from deep. I think the interesting thing with Kunde is because he, at times earlier in his career, played as a fullback, he's got this sense that he can maraud sort of forward and he can burst forward. I know everyone's sort of probably seen it with Jules Kunde, his winning goal against Barcelona in the cup last year. Truly incredible, taking it from his own half, one to and then uh, getting into the box and, and finish uh, finishing it absolutely wonderfully. I don't know how regularly we'll see that at Chelsea as a centre-back, but I think it shows you that there is that progressive side to him and especially in games where Chelsea maybe need to be a little bit more dominant against, say, a low block, he could absolutely be a threat um, from the right of Chelsea's defence. So I think that's that's an interesting thing to look at with Jules Kunde and I think could bring a lot to Chelsea's uh, defence this year. I guess my only other counterpoint to this is, is always like, you know, if you're going to invest a lot this summer on an area, I would always have preferred to go central midfield and because I think it needs it a bit more than centre back but we have to remember that you know Jules Kunde is very highly rated and there's nothing to say that in a year's time if Chelsea were to wait a bit like Erling Haaland not to the same level of price but a bit like in a year's time with his price a little bit lower another team could swiftly act and you know Jules Kunde may go elsewhere than Chelsea so they're getting him one of the best centre-backs for a, for a price that is kind of ridiculous it is um, especially with the money we've made this summer from selling players you know, on a very basic level I think he strengthens an area that is already very very strong and you know it maybe it is one of those things where with the amount of games Chelsea have this year it's going to give us unbelievable depth you don't know what's going to happen in terms of form especially in terms of fitness we may have a defensive injury crisis very early on you know two of our centre-backs could go down Christensen Dave Rudiger who is kind of seen I think that for me is like the first choice or the most regular back three that Thomas Tuchel has, has chose this year Thiago Silva can't play every game and Trevor Chalabar I know there is a concern over that and it is my concern that if everyone's fit and you're kind of looking at rotation Kunde will go in front of Trevor Chalabar because he is more of a, a big money signing um, but we hope that Trevor Chalabar can get minutes this year and I really hope that Thomas Tuchel can give him those minutes I don't expect him to play 40 games this year but if he can get 15 to 20 appearances I think that'd be good for his development as a young centre-back because I think he's proven himself good enough to stay in the first team uh, squad this year and as well on Kurt Zuma um, it's a shame of Kurt Zuma it really is uh, I've, I've been a fan of Kurt for a very long time I think he's a very very good center back especially in a back four it's very easy to forget how strong he was maybe you know the best run of his Chelsea career under Frank Lampard at the start of last season when he was in that back four alongside Thiago Silva uh, Reese James and Ben Chirwell one of the best centre backs in Europe when you looked at his stats defensive stats especially aerial threats to um, scoring as many goals as he did last year his best goal scoring season for Chelsea was last year um, from corners he was such a big threat and I do believe he's absolutely suited to the Premier League. Uh, I think he would instantly become West Ham's best defender. And I wouldn't be stunned if very quickly, if he really settles at West Ham, really develops, gets better, becomes their best defender bigger clubs will be calling for him in a few years time I would not be stunned at all if in a few years time maybe he's playing for a massive European club in their defence because I do feel he is that good I think that Zuma he may not be what Thomas Tuchel wants and who am I to judge the coach who's just won us the European Cup and I think it's unfair on Zuma a bit like Tammy Abraham to just be isolated all season I think this is a guy who deserves first team minutes and he will be getting it at West Ham but I do wonder in terms of criticism maybe not you know whatever Tuchel thinks but maybe from fans is that aesthetics you know around Zuma I don't think he's ever been as bad on the ball as people make out Now I'm not going to call him a sweeper I don't think he's as good as say Antonio Rudiger on the ball but I just wonder sometimes with Zuma like other players aesthetics the way he looks doing things can sometimes look awkward but actually his execution isn't that bad and uh, Chelsea for great account on on Twitter was kind of comparing uh, Zuma and Kunde 
in terms of certain their abilities especially in terms of passing and, and progressive uh, sort of elements of their game and it wasn't too far you know away from each other and I know they play in different leagues and it's very hard to compare I think sometimes centre-backs in particular and looking at their numbers because you have to take into account what type of team they're playing in the quality of players they're playing around and sometimes you know that can sort of warp how good a player is or whether he's actually suited to your system or not so I understand sometimes it's difficult to analyse how suitable centre-backs going to be because you know these the centre-backs play in different sides they're, they're asked to do different things but I thought it was quite interesting to look at those stats and, and show you that Zuma isn't as bad on the ball as I think people have made out and he's been I think brilliant for Chelsea I think that injury back in 2016 was really unfortunate but I don't think he can see himself at Chelsea as as sort of a failure or like not being successful here because he did get a lot of first team minutes and unfortunately Zuma like Tammy Abraham like so many other players fall victim to the short-term ways at Chelsea where a new coach comes in, tries things different. You know, Christensen was sort of in the position Zuma is now at about, you know, this, at the start of this year when Lampard was still here. You know, he wasn't seen as one of the first choice centre-backs, but Tuchel comes in, plays a system that suits his game a lot more. And now Christensen is seen as one of the regulars at Chelsea. That's kind of the way it goes at a club as chaotic as Chelsea. So I really wish Zuma the best. I want to see him do well, even if it is at West Ham. Um, hopefully he can help maybe get some points off some of our title rivals this year and I think he absolutely deserves all the respect and support of Chelsea fans because he's been such a great personality as well at Chelsea such a, a positive personality that I love seeing on the training ground and love seeing playing for us so I wish Kurt Zuma the best but the second part of today's show obviously is going to be about central midfield and Sao Niguez a potential of a loan move from Atletico Madrid this is from the Telegraph Chelsea old talks with Atletico Madrid for Sao Niguez as they look to offload fringe midfielders it says that Chelsea have held talks with Madrid Sao Niguez 26 has emerged as a target to bolster Thomas Tuchel squad this week but they need to find clubs for the likes of Ross Barkley and Timoe Bakioko to make room in their squad. Talks have centred around a deal similar to Mateo Kovacic who arrived at Stamford Bridge on a one-year loan before converting the move into a permanent transfer. Saunaguez is seen as a player who could add competition to Kovacic in Golo Kante and Jorginho this season. Before recording, Matt Law tweeting, talks continuing between Chelsea and Atletico. Chelsea keen on similar deal to the one they negotiated for Kovacic as, as was said in the report which was a loan with an option to buy rather than an obligation it certainly got a chance so my instant reaction to Sal was I was kind of underwhelmed because I've mainly because we've been thinking about other targets this summer um, Declan Rice has continually felt unrealistic given his his price and I have said on the channel before that I just feel like Chelsea are going to remain patient on Rice and in a year's time if he's still rejecting contract offers from West Ham it's a matter of I think when Rice signs for Chelsea, not if. I, I just think that eventually West Ham will see the opportunity to get a lot of money for a player who doesn't want to stay at their club. So Rice getting another season of first team football, West Ham being a brilliant midfielder, I think is only going to make him a better player. Um, so I think that Chelsea just have to accept that we can wait for a year. But there has been that feeling that if Chelsea were going to invest more than a loan on, on a central midfielder, We've spoken about Aurelien Chouin many. Monaco were knocked out of the Champions League, which could make things interesting financially for them. Um, losing to Shakhtar Donetsk in, in the playoff. Very heartbreaking game. And Chouin many was incredible in it. He really was. Showing all the capabilities, not just in terms of the profile Chelsea have been lacking, but it's one of the things Cesc Fabregas has pointed out about Chouin many's game. He is much more than just a holding midfielder. A bit like what we say about N'Golo Kante, in the sense that he could play in a variety of areas. Um, and just kind of proving why Chelsea have been interested in him and why for me I think he'd be a brilliant signing this summer for us I also believe he wouldn't just be a fourth choice midfielder um, I, I kind of when I'm hearing fourth choice as in this would be the, the player we'd bring in would be some sort of distant kind of sporadic player I've kind of always felt find that a little bit silly um, because as good as the midfield pairing of Jorginho and N'Golo Kante is, I think in rotation, I absolutely could see someone like Chiumeni coming in and taking up a lot of minutes. And it's the same with Saunagez. So Chiumeni, maybe something later on could happen if the Saunagez deal doesn't you know, come to fruition and Chelsea don't get what they want from that loan move. But in terms of Saunagez, he's a very, very experienced player. There's no denying it. He is, I think, an excellent midfielder. He was part of a La Liga winning, title winning side last season uh, under Diego Simeone. He's been such a part of that team. He's kind of a jack of all trades in midfield. I don't think he's a specialist, which is kind of good because even though physically in terms of his profile, he may not look that dissimilar to Kovacic or Jorginho or even Kante being like a more of an imposing, big, taller central midfielder um, to come into that double six. 
he is more of, I think, a utility midfielder, which can seem like a little, a little bit of an insult. But I think for, for what Simeone wants, I think he's a very important player. He can play box to box. He can kind of fill different roles in central midfield, which I think is good for a, a sort of a manager like Tuchel, who likes to change things up from time to time and can maybe later on in the season see Chelsea go to a back four and potentially play a free in midfield. And, and Sal could absolutely fill that role as he has for Diego Simeone. I think, yeah, it's underwhelming because it would be a loan. And there kind of is that belief that Chelsea... You know, it's kind of a stopgap for next season. Even though it's a very good stopgap, it's kind of, you're not really committing to that area like I think you would be if you signed Aureli and Chirmeni. That does not mean that Sao wouldn't be a good addition for Chelsea, a very experienced player who's played in some of the biggest Champions League games, played a lot of La Liga football under Diego Simeone. I guess just the concern is taking a player who signed a nine-year contract a few years back with Atletico Madrid out of what is a very specific tactical setup at Atletico Madrid. It is so unique in European football, um, the way Diego, Diego Simeone sets up his teams and taking someone out of a culture of a club that has been so settled for so many years and bringing him into Chelsea where he's expected to perform instantly. Now, given the type of professional he is, I would prefer to have Sal Niguez as a rotational midfielder, as sort of a backup to the, the front, so sort of the first two in midfield of Jorginho Ingolo, and N'Golo Kante, then a Loftus cheek, even though I'm a fan of him, or Ethan Ampadu, because I think that, you know, it's a more experienced head. I think it's someone that wants to impress at Chelsea and could do a very decent job over the season. But I still get the sense that I think as good as Sao Niguez could do in that role, I still think that next summer we should be going in for a younger midfielder. I just do. I, I think it would be a better choice for Chelsea. Um, for me personally, Sao Niguez would have to do an amazing job. He'd have to absolutely transform our midfield. And I'm just not quite sure if he's going to do it to that extent. But if he can fill in when required, if he can do a little bit more than that, because as I said, in the centre-back situation, you never know what's going to happen in Golo Kante injury issues. Kovacic over recent seasons has at least one time during the year got an injury that takes him out for about a month. So it's good to have that um, sort of those numbers in that area, which we absolutely need. I don't think we could have gone into this season with just the three central midfielders because then you're sort of, I think you're asking for Mason Mount to go into that double six, which I'm not a fan of personally because I think we take away how brilliant Mount is further up the pitch or you're shifting Chalabar into that position potentially. And I think he wants to play further um, into his career as a centre back. So, I'm not going to complain if Saunders comes in. I think that, yeah, we could be more energised by an Aurelian Chumeni coming in or, of course, a massive transfer for Declan Rice potentially next summer. But he's a very experienced player. And um, Thomas Tuchel, you've got to trust what Thomas Tuchel has been doing with this squad, the way he's transformed certain players, got them into his system, have worked so well. And there's nothing to say that Saunders, despite being so settled at Atletico Madrid and maybe not setting the world alight as like the future of Chelsea's midfield for a season, could do a very decent job at Chelsea. So that's kind of my balance take on it I'm not good Please don't get the impression that I'm saying that Sound Niguez is a rubbish player. I'm not. I think he's a very experienced professional. And if he comes in, I hope he does a great job because we need it in that area. We really do, I think, to compete for the Premier League title. You need strength in that area. And hopefully with that winning mentality stereotype that he's had at Atletico Madrid, he can bring that into Chelsea and help us in our pursuit to win the Premier League title this year. Let me know your opinions on Sound Niguez. Let me know your opinions on Jules Kunde and Kurt Zuma and everything I've spoken about today in the comments below. But that is it for this edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Thank you guys so so much for taking the time to watch it if you did enjoy it hit that subscribe button and a notification bell follow me on twitter at son of chelsea follow my work now on football london with carefree chelsea and i'll see you again